Good morning. Hello, guys. I am Dr. Vikram. I am senior resident, senior surgical resident department of oral nasopharyngeal surgery, IK General College Hospital. I wish you a very happy journey ahead. Everyone, this is Dr. Shweta Pandey. I am a third year postgraduate resident in department of oral and maxillofacial surgery. Yeah. So, will you always think that you should do NVBS after BDS, or you will confuse? So, uh, generally in India, what happens is that every person has this. a uh, criteria in their mind and they opt for mbbs and when they don't settle for mbbs they go for bx uh for my case it was the same and uh, because of the lack of awareness about the bds course and whatever there is the is uh, in the curriculum of the bds course people don't realize the acumen of a bds right so whatever i felt during my bds term when i was doing my undergraduate is that bds is an accumulation of a uh, different techniques like it is a amalgamation of your technical a bit of engineering a bit of medical and a bit of statistical skin that come together as an amalgamation and they give you a fantastic uh, acumen when you graduate out you can only understand about bds when you do the course right so after i started doing the bds the in the bds course i always felt very comfortable and it was the pose that exactly you know uh, coincided along with the objective which i had when i pursued my graduation So, did you choose BDS by choice or not getting MBBS? I had an inspiration of choosing BDS because someone from my family is a very successful practicing dentist. So, I had an inspiration to choose BDS. But my first one always was uh, MBBS. To be very candid, it's obvious, sir. So, can you share particular or very challenging cases you have managed? My man, so you're sure during my course graduation, during your post graduation. Let's see, in the department of surgery, uh. Uh, you always case study in cases, so we deal with emergency cases, we uh, face cases where the patients are suffering from carcinoma. We uh, treat different cystic tumors, and we fear uh, no uh, treat patients with uh, trauma and all of that. Patient who come with uh, traumatic injuries. So one such case was that there was a patient who came to us. She was a young patient, and she was old to get married, and she came and cross an accident, and she had a complaint of a panfacial trauma. So she had zygomatic fracture, she had orbital fracture, she had fracture of her maxilla, and we had to treat her, and we had to make sure that the her impending marriage does not get cancelled off. No, so the patient was under a lot of psychological stress along with the stress of uh, the the injury that she had. Uh, cut short, fifteen days from that, uh, she was uh, back with her follow up, and uh, within a span of twenty twenty five days. we were able to get a good prognosis for the patient and within 2 months her impending marriage which was uh, due it was successful she got married and he still she still had a follow up and we did a rhinoplasty for her to correct her nasal deformity she had a nasal uh, injury of the nasal bridge which had to be connected and i think when you satisfy your patients uh, in a general case uh, you know you feel the, uh, uh, gratitude from their part and that is very satisfying as uh, about it certain okay yes, sir so it's a bit controversy question But Philip, please tell me what's the on average salary after doing? See, it depends on uh, how you work and what are what is your acumen as an oral surgeon. Mm-hmm. The even when you pass out as an oral surgeon, the cap is uh, no, uh, branches that you can explore out. You can work as a fellow or a senior resident in the hospital. You can get a good salary there. You can uh, explore uh, your other fields like uh, you can go for your consultations and all of that. There is a good scope in that. You can also uh, go in the field of academics. You can take up teaching as well. That uh, is a scary. But a beginner oral maxillofacial surgeon in any field uh, should earn somewhere between thirty-five to fifty thousand, fifty thousand uh, uh, rupees per month as as a beginner. And that increases and and decreases depending on which state you work. Right. So if you talk about the NCA, that is the uh, basic base skill anyone starts with. Plus, if you have your own practice and your uh, uh, consultation fee, you can earn more. Right. So. A uh, established oral surgeon can earn anywhere between one point five to two lakh rupees per month, and if you have your own practice, then again can earn more. So it's my personal question, but after doing oral surgery, uh, can we do major surgeries, or we have to do some different kinds of fellowships and other courses? Right. So, oral surgery is the only branch in BDS. Uh, not bragging, but uh, this it is the only branch in BDS uh, in in the field of uh, in the field of dentistry that connects the the medical scene the medical scene of surgery with the dental surgery right so after doing mds it opens the plethora of of uh, the major surgeries that you have a young oral surgeon a young oral surge surgery postgraduate does not have the skill set uh, 
or experience required to do major surgeries right he has uh, the exposure but he lacks the experience regardless whichever institute he has passed up from my personal opinion is that there are various fellowships done given by government and non-government organizations along with national fellowships by our associations like umsi and fhno and you have certain uh, branches that you can explore like orthoplastic surgery like oral cancer there are fellowships in oncology that you can pursue you can pursue uh, craniofacial surgeries you can pursue cleft craniofacial surgeries you can pursue plastic surgery and you can also pursue as a super speciality uh, your microvascular reconstructive surgeries or anterior skull base surgeries you can do that as your multi speciality once you go into these fields and into these fellowships and these courses diplomas whatever they are in can then gain the skill set along with the experience and then you can perform major surgeries a very convincingly with a lot of ease so major surgeries you can perform after doing your bds uh, and after doing your mds but you need to do a certain fellowship so that your acumen your skill set and your expertise become very firm in whatever surgeries you perform because when you do a major surgery literally a patient's life is at stake you understand the circumstances and then you understand whatever uh you no know, limitations you have and then you can improve likewise so the last one so what advice you would you give to your junior resident or your students starting their course surgeon trainers so uh, whenever a young uh, graduate walks in in a department of oral surgery the advice we give is that you are allowed to open whatever you want to open as long as you know how to close it so to know to manage cases you need a bit of uh, self confidence along with your skill set that develops with experience but a young uh, graduate lacks that experience so you have to differentiate between con uh, your confidence and your competence you do not take any case for granted right and there is a a a, dip, a a basic difference between where you need to stop and where you need to refer the case so it is always necessary to take advice for a case do a follow up of the patient think good amount of history from the patient and plan the case before you begin operating right refer to your textbook refer to your uh, seniors and your faculty whenever possible there is another saying in our field of oral surgery is that it takes a very short amount of time to know what to do but it takes a lifetime to learn what not to do right you know very soon what to cut but it takes time to learn what not to cut your idea of being a surgeon is to ablate as much of diseased and unneeded tissue as possible and see the vital structures to understand that know that and do it with ease and give the patient a good prognosis it takes time it takes patience and it takes a lot of empathy from your part as a surgeon so i would advise all junior surgeons to study hard get the background strong refer to your faculty and seniors whenever possible grow through the literature if possible and get a good strong base and then move on with your surgeries and get skills and improve your skill set as a when most skill thank you when um, were you always thinking to do mds after doing bds Are you a bit confused? Ah uh, no, I was not confused at all. Whenever um, I was like during my BDS days, I was uh, drawn towards the clinical departments, the uh, cases, and I wanted to learn more deeply into the the in into the stream basically. So I was clear and I planned to do MBS both after completing. What's inspired you to pursue oral surgery, and what's motivated you towards this field? Okay. um when i was in third year during my undergraduate time uh that time basically we started doing cases in the different departments so when i was in oral surgery i felt that uh, it is an instant pain relief which is given to the patient the same day the treatment is start the same day the treatment is completed and uh, the satisfaction which we get while uh, relieving the patient and also it has basically um foundations boundaries other than the restricted stream of pds that is why i feel that oral surgery is the key branch which which affected or which which uh, um, drew uh, myself towards that so i always wanted to be an oral surgeon that's why i did and and doing mds and that yeah ma'am uh, what's your answer to those female dentists with the ug students who are planning to get into oral surgery 
see if we uh, basically look into some datas if we see about our country there are very least uh, number of female oral surgeons even if uh, there are uh, surgeons or oral surgery post graduates like us who are studying but practicing very less so i'd always if i would advise i'll always advise that there should be increased number of females who are joining mds in the department in the oral surgery department and should pursue clinically after completing the post graduate as well ma'am what's your approach to deal with the anxious or the fearful patients see when patients come to our department they are basically with swelling pain tumor trauma so uh, if i were on that side on the patient side i basically deal with them on that way ki if i am the patient how should i be dealt that is the way i deal with them be calm be patient just uh, make them feel safe that they are in safe or good hands so they'll be fine thank you and so thank you to senior just a look give me this recent chat tedious